Left trigger warning, mouse and keyboard players who have ever died to controller aim assist may want to tune away from this video. I don't want to name any names, but there are certainly some pros out there who would not like the results of this study. A couple of those names rhyme with Sneefu and Blizzle, but again, I'm not naming any names. I put a ton of time into this, so if you don't mind throwing a like on it, that would be really appreciated. But either way, it's your bro Rody bringing you a brand new video. Let's get right into it. I completely reset my settings for this video, so if you're just looking for a straight up screenshot of my new settings you're not gonna find that right away but what I'm going to be doing is leaving timestamps throughout the video so if you need to come back and check out specific aspects of your aim or your look sensitivity you're gonna be able to find that in the description of this video with all the timestamps there I want to start off by getting into the components of aiming which I think is something a lot of people overlook whenever they're trying to decide whether they should use linear exponential legacy or just whatever sensitivity they should be using in the game so first of all, I think almost most importantly for controller players, we have AR tracking, which that is basically just your tracking of long distance, medium distance, or close range of opponents who are running or swerving, whatever it may be. It's your tracking of those people, which is completely controlled by ADS Sends. Then we have sniper sensitivity as well, which is also controlled right now on the new look sensitivity completely by your ADS. If you're on Legacy, you can still customize your own sniper sensitivity. You guys are really lucky, but for right now on controller, we can't do that with the new sensitivity. Then third tier with ADS, we have long distance tracking. And now what I mean by long distance tracking, I mean once an opponent is so far away that you no longer get aim assist anymore in those shots, which I'm sure a lot of you have experienced. It's usually around 150 meters. Then up fourth, we have flick shots, which is completely controlled by your look curve and your look sensitivity those are the two things that flick shots really get dependent on and that's usually linear which is the best one for that then we also have your hip fire tracking with smgs and shotguns also a little bit different from flick shots but it is just as equally as important and then finally we have switching between your long and your short which is kind of encompassing everything together which is so important to be able to shotgun then switch to shooting your ar shooting a sniper and all those things together are what makes somebody really a smooth and great player so now that we know all the components let's dive into the first one with your ADS so going into ADS we're gonna skip through all of this remember that I reset my settings so these aren't the settings that are we're gonna end up with at the end of this video but coming down here to aim down sight sensitivity in the advanced so we're looking at the settings that Epic kind of recommended to us based on what it used to be for Legacy. And you'll notice these little green bars of what a lot of people have kind of based their sensitivities off of. And this is the biggest mistake of the entire video, in my opinion, that the whole controller community has been making. And I myself was making too until, you know, we went through full science mode, nerd mode with this video right here. So 16% is right around where I've seen most players who switch to linear use because 16% is the same thing that people on Exponential or Legacy use. It's right around there, you know, give or take up to 20 or maybe down to like 12. However, this makes it nearly impossible to hit those long distance shots past 150 meters. I'm going to display all of this once I talk through the changes and what people have been overlooking is that you can actually drop your ADS down to around 6%. Down to anywhere from 5 to 8% I have found is perfect for still being able to hit some of these long distance shots while also tracking at the medium range. And here's the trick. A lot of players have been moving their vertical and horizontal boosts down to 0%. I did this as well thinking this was the best possible thing because you know, you're on linear. You want to get that rapid speed movement. However, you only want that no boost on your look sensitivity. You don't want that on your ADS as well, which is why moving this boost up to 10%, right around 10%, give or take, these values can definitely be tweaked to be more fitting for you guys. But what I have found for myself is that moving these to 10% and having your horizontal and vertical speeds at 6%, what this is going to do is whenever you're trying to be super precise from long range, you can barely move the stick. You'll barely move the stick, and what you're going to get is the perfect, perfect amount of just being able to go slow and track people from long range. Whereas if you need to up close or whatever to jump from target to target, you can push the stick all the way to the left or the right, and you're gonna get that additional 10% to catch up to running targets and anything like that, which is something that's been massively overlooked with ADS. 
Now, I like to turn the turning boost ramp time. I pushed that down to right around 0 0.10 seconds. I started off having it on zero, but I've slowly worked it up and it feels pretty good at 0.1 seconds. But again, this is all off of feel, but I think you should use a ramp time as well because it keeps it just from like snapping too quickly and you losing control of your ADS. So let's hop on in and let me show you guys what this really does. Okay, so notice notice how well this is tracking the target. And I, I can hover right around the upper body and just follow it all the way. And I can even shoot the burst to where the burst is basically following the bot. Like, I know this is up close. Let's take a step back and show you guys this from medium range as well. And then we'll show you far range too because obviously, you know, the goal is to find a sensitivity that allows us to do all three types of tracking. So I think the general worry with going this low with sensitivity was that it wouldn't be fast enough to track a running player. But what I have found is that going this low with the boost on as well, you, you're you plenty fast enough to keep it with the player. And especially when that aim assist kicks in, like right here. This aim assist kicks in and it's almost, as long as I'm moving the stick with it, it's almost carrying me on the target. It's where every single shot is almost registering. And this is with a burst gun as well where typically it's hard to hit all three shots. You can see even from this range, I'm almost hitting, I'm hitting at least two shots every single time, but I'm hitting three on some occasions as well, like right there. Absolutely disgusting. So let's jump back to the farthest distance and see how that is as well. So here we are at 100 meters. This is where we should still see aim assist. And yeah, I, I do feel aim assist on the target actually. And I have a pretty easy time of still tracking the target. Obviously, I'm not going to be perfect. This is only day number three of me on these settings. It's not going to be perfect by any means, but I have already seen a dramatic improvement from what I used to have on aim assist. You can see right there. Here is where the biggest difference is made. So notice how the target is right around 136 meters. We'll go to 140. We'll see. Yeah, so we're out of aim assist range right here. I can get rid of the arrow. Right here, I'm no longer getting aim assist on this target. And typically, when you have your aim assist pushed up to like 16%, when you're at 6%, I can track a little bit better. And I can actually follow the target a lot more accurately. So these, these shots aren't impossible to hit anymore. It's still a very hard shot. This is a hard shot to hit on PC or what, you're 144 meters away with an assault rifle. Like, it's a very hard shot to hit. But I can do this a lot more accurately, even while talking, than I could before. But now I want to show you guys the biggest reason to try out these settings, and that is the sniper sensitivity. Previously, the sniper sensitivity was horrible, especially if you have no boost on. But now with boost on, look at how I can, I can move the sniper, kind of how you guys want your sniper sensitivities to be. You want them to be faster, and you can finally move these a little bit quicker. So I'm not the perfect sniper. I'm not the best sniper in the world, but try these settings out, and I'm promise you i promise you you're going to be hitting way more snipes if you're using linear than you have in the past and that luckily worked out for the example but guys give it a shot this ads sensitivity is going to serve you wonders a very key thing that i completely forgot to talk about in this video i, I went back to edit and i just completely forgot to talk about a few key things and number one being the way you determine what your boost should be. So, I, you know, I said mine was 10%, but you guys should determine what yours are based on what feels better. So the real reason to use these boosts is to make sniping feel better. And also so you can move back and forth in fights quicker. But the real reason is to make it to where you can finally snipe on linear and exponential. So the way to determine this you need to move your horizontal and your vertical speed to whatever feels the most comfortable for sniping. Because if you have your boost down to zero, 16% is going to be what you get on your sniper sensitivity and just your ADS overall. So for me, 16% felt the best whenever I came in here and I was using 16% with my sniper. Because now going with a sniper right here... 16% is what I'm getting right here. And this, this feels like a normal sniper sensitivity for me. So going back into here where 6% was my X and my Y for my ADS look, 
we gotta move the boost up to okay this is gonna sound really basic i know we got some third grade math i don't even know what grade math this is but so 16 was where it felt really good and six is where i have my regular ads so you gotta move the boost up to 16 minus 6 which is 10 all right so i know very tough math you didn't expect to get that in this video but so that is how you determine your boost right there for your snipers so one more really important thing i want to talk about is adsing with shotguns and your smg so first of all fortnite really made a little bit of a difference with the pump here to where the hip fire does almost the same exact damage as when you ads and that's a bad example of me missing but you see how it was almost the same exact damage with the pump and that's what makes the pump so good because in build fights you can jump build and then you can keep hip firing so you can get your shots off with hip fire and it does about the same damage as if you were to come at the top of the ramp and ads but that's different than the tack the tack actually does more damage whenever you ads so you're going to want to ads if you have a tack and you're going to want to hip fire if you have a pump although of course there's going to be some instances where you where you hip fire with attack that's just normal in these fights but that's why I usually prefer the pump over the TAC, even though the TAC definitely has its advantages. But also with the SMG, the SMG's accuracy is about the same on hip fire right now as it is if you ADS. You don't get like a smaller bullet spread really. It's about the same. And they actually buffed the hip fire to where the hip fire is really, really nice. So what I recommend is you guys don't actually ads with smgs when you don't have to so imagine you're in a fight and you're just in a fight right here you're tracking your opponent you track with your shotgun you get off that shot and you don't stop tracking after the pump shot this is where people i think really mess up with their pump shots you don't stop tracking so you keep tracking and you just switch to your smg and you hit fire that as well you don't zoom in this is going look how fast you can get off shots whenever you're just going like that whereas if you went like this and then you zoomed in it's mere milliseconds difference between getting off shots like this and shots like this but those milliseconds definitely matter in fights it's the difference of you taking a shotgun to the face and that's a huge part of you surviving in the game we're gonna have a second part to this video with look sensitivity everything you guys should know for hip fire and all of that the video was getting to be so long but Fortnite, there's not a ton of content right now, so two videos out of this is going to be perfect anyways. Let me know. I want you guys to try these aim settings before you try my look settings. That way, you're not toggling too much at once. Let me know what you guys think down below. This has been Cole from the Roadie Bros. I'll see you guys in the next video.